my name is Daniel, and today I want to illustrate very simply and quickly why geomagnetic uh, reversals do happen and why they happen in a random way. So to do this, I'm going to use some magnets. Okay, one big magnet here to represent the center of the galaxy, and some smaller magnets that will represent um, solar systems around it. Okay, you notice that in order to st stick them to the center of the galaxy, okay, they need to be flipped. Okay. And they naturally stick to the side uh, because actually on the galactic um, ecliptic plane, which is kind of an imaginary disk around the center of the galaxy, uh, there is a centrifuge. So they tend to stabilize on that plane. And uh, also the magnetic uh, force is stronger. Okay, so when you move magnets here, you can notice that the attraction is stronger near the center of this ecliptic plane. Okay, you can really feel it stronger when you cross the ecliptic plane. So this is why most um, all matter tends to stabilize on this ecliptic plane. Now, we, so we already noticed that in order to stick them side by side, we need to change, we need to flip them. Okay. And we will also notice that on the same magnetic ring around the center of the galaxy, magnets repulse each other. Okay, this is the natural way magnets arrange themselves. Again, because they are spinning, there is centrifuge and keeps them from uh, colliding with each other all the time. Okay, and now we're gonna stick another layer. So let's say another magnetic ring around the previous one. Again, the magnets, in order to stick them side by side, they need to be flipped. So their magnetic sh uh, field is flipped according to one another. Whoops. Okay, let's start over again. Okay, so what you see taking place here, these are actually the branches of our galaxy, the Milky Way. Okay, and they're always spinning in the same direction. So the center of the galaxy, the core here, never changes polarity because everything is spinning in the same direction always. And because they are all colliding and there's particles and atoms exchanging electrons in a circular manner, in a circular, um, let's call it uh, current. Okay, this generates um, a huge electromagnetic field to the core. Okay, now let's talk about um, <clears throat> our planet, our solar system, its position around the center of the galaxy is about at three quarters from the center. Okay, this is where life is possible. It's not too far, not too close, not enough accidents, like collisions, and uh, not too hot, not too cold. I'm pretty sure in this life circle here, there are 
thousands of billions of planets with life. So, now our trajectory, as you can imagine, is not a perfect circle around the center of the galaxy. It's rather, uh, rather um, a spiral, slowly, slowly falling down to the center. Okay, but again, it's not a perfect spiral, but rather uh, a spiral with tiny little loops with other solar, uh, solar systems around us, okay? Loops that go in and out from the center, up and down the galactic plane, okay? So random loops with random circumstances, always changing, never encountering the uh, same conditions. And this is why um, geomagnetic reversals um, don't seem to happen in a cyclic way. We find no patterns, but it seems to happen randomly. So again, why does it happen? Because every time we need to cross this thin line between magnetic rings, okay, so in our trajectory, we're looping around, and we cross from one magnetic ring to the other. Obviously, our polar shift needs to happen. And also, this can happen, um, has more chances to happen when we cross the galactic plane, because that's where there, the, there is the most matter around the, the galaxy. Um, that's where there are the most uh, solar systems concentrated on this thin disk. So again, these rings, they are not spiral shaped. They are circular, but they never have the same diameter. They always change diameter. And this all depends on the arrangement of solar systems and matter from, a, from, from the center of the galaxy straight out. Okay, so they are not perfect circles either. They always change shape, but they are kind of circles. Now, this explains uh, polar magnetic sh uh, field reversals or flips. Okay, when our solar system crosses from one magnetic ring to another one. And now I'm gonna take the next minute to explain uh, geomagnetic migrations, which are double shifts or even triple. Okay, so this happens when in our trajectory we loop around from one magnetic ring to the other, so, and then loop back in the magnetic ring where we were before. And um, this can be very dangerous. It happened before, and last time it happened, uh, Mars lost its atmosphere and it cooled down so much that it could never recover. I'll explain why very quickly. We were very lucky to have a moon big enough and heavy enough to attract not only um, atmosphere, <coughs> that always makes an <coughs> egg shape towards the moon, <coughs> but also the magma inside. So attracting magma and water kind of keeps the soup warm by spinning around the planet and steering the soup. So also our planet was bigger than Mars and it didn't cool down as much as to lose the ability to recover from that geomagnetic double reverser reversal. 
so now you know I hope my explanation um, gets a lot of comments and debate thank you very much <laughs>